welcome back. This is uh, part two of episode 17 of the Deacon Type Silly Podcast. Episode 17 is the Rob McDougall episode, so if you didn't get a chance to catch part one, I highly suggest you do watch uh, episode one, uh, loaded with stories, so many great stories about coaching John Tavares and lacrosse from the time he was eight years old till like 13, uh, working for Don Cherry on the grapevine back in the 80s, working at the Hockey News with Bob McKenzie working at the Toronto Sun uh, as a cartoonist. Just so much great stuff and people he's met. Uh, his Walter Gretzky story is quite uh, quite a favorite of mine. So Rob's class guy and uh, definitely one of my favorite guests we've ever had. So make sure you catch part one. This is a fantastic. So part two uh, is a little different. We, uh, we created a slideshow basically of a bunch of Rob's art and photos over the years and uh, basically got him to tell a story behind the... Uh, prints sort of the paintings and the inspiration and stories associated with the people who he painted and and, uh, and provided the artwork to so fantastic stuff if you uh, if you're listening on spotify or any of the other providers google podcasts apple podcasts um you'll get even more out of it if you uh, watch the youtube feed because again you'll see the art that he's talking about but you can still listen to all the stories of course through uh, uh the spotify app so again guys thanks for tuning in we love you guys. Uh, don't forget, slam that subscribe button. Uh, we've got lots more great content coming. So without further ado, titter-tatter, let's get at her. Get our slideshow of some photos that you had sent along to me, Rob. Um, so now it's like I can do a quick talk about each, like real quick. Yeah, just just a, just a quick run through. You know, if there's uh-huh. any great stories in in amongst it, feel free. But we'll tr- there's 30, 35 oh, slides wait. total. So uh, like I said, we can burn through them and then just you know your recollection of doing the painting or your inspiration or any interactions with the players or people along the way. So uh, just give me one second here, guys. Just, like I said, I'm just. I just replaced, I, I replaced the line. Just yeah. Kissing I, I actually Start loved it. Like, oh, I didn't know much about you as an individual, obviously, only than you as an artist. And when I looked at the, uh, when the first time it caught my eye on your Facebook, I was like, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, uh, that should make for an interesting podcast alone, if that's anything like the personality. It's but uh, not worrying about your brand. If you know what I mean? Like, uh, I when I post on Facebook, I, I don't worry about, if it's going to destroy my career, I've already been good at it myself. So uh, I don't, I don't sweat it, you know? Yeah, that's right. When I do this kind of stuff, I'm just telling the people, you know what? I'm just a, I'm just, just like everybody else is trying to have a little bit of fun, you know? Yeah, no shit. Don't, don't take it too serious. So this is yeah. what I pulled together. Uh, yeah, that's just a uh, process of how I uh, draw. Obviously they're not, they're not in the right order and it's not your fault. It's just, that no, no. I, I'm trying to figure out the orders too, but, yeah, it's just a, a process that I've learned uh, to do. Obviously, when I do this caricature, I really, really concentrated on on who Marner is, the way he skates, the way his his jerseys flutters and his pants are oversized and his uh, shin pads are huge because he takes he absorbs all those shots from yeah. the point. And so I, you know, like instead of just drawing a a really dynamite caricature of a person's face and then throw on a body like they do i wanted to capture the whole essence of him so that's that's what i did so um that went on the t-shirts as you can see in the upper left corner yeah, yeah. I've, never, I've never heard of that kind of stick before what's the, the money what's stick called? yeah he's the money money. he's money I think. <laughs> it's cool detail and then, uh, i love uh i love that photo it's awesome yeah, like I like the details. <laughs> on, you know, like okay, yeah, so you're all in the details. Uh, the top left was uh, that was when uh, uh, I was in um, Don's living room about four days after Rose, his wife, passed away, and it was pretty devastating. I mean, everything about it. But uh, um, when she was sick, um, I know that Don and his daughter. Cindy uh, planned to make a Cindy, uh, sorry, a Rose Cherry home and make it for 
kids with, uh, you know, serious, serious illnesses or, or terminal to make, you know, make their life happy for their last days. And so Don wanted to, to do something and I, I wanted to contribute in some way. So I presented the, this idea of turning uh, Ron McLean and Don Cherry into the scene from the American Gothic where, where the, uh, yeah. Yeah. it has actually that, that painting as the husband and wife, it was actually that guy's daughter, but nobody knows that. That's, oh, I did not know that. Artists, yeah, artists actually will use their sister for uh, for posing and stuff. Like my dad was my best pose. Like he was my best uh, model I ever had. Cool. Oh. Turn him into a lion. But anyways, uh, the other one was um, I did that for Don. I can't remember what that was about. I wound up doing two Rock'em Sock'em's uh, covers for Don. So you guys mm -hmm. might have got one when you were kids. As a matter of fact, guaranteed I did. I got. I got the original on the wall right there. That's a, I don't know what number that is, but yeah, uh, I did the two covers for him, but he had 14. 30, 30 covers or something. But this one here I had, uh, I, I took Ron McLean out and put uh, blue in there. And um, yeah, so Don uh, wrote to Luba, my love on the very top. I yeah, that out because uh, it kind of looked weird, but hey, that was a Don Cherry thing. Yeah, yeah. No, I love the I love blue, I love blue in that in that painting. Uh, there, there's something yeah. that I'm always drawn to the to the dog in that one. That it, yeah. almost like the dog has character himself. He got this expression and uh, weird. That's yeah. probably the only dog that I ever drew in my whole career up until COVID, and uh, um, I had a bad experience actually. Uh, well, it'll be tomorrow. I, I lost my dog a year ago last year. Okay. And I went into a downer. Actually, that minor piece that you saw, I actually uh, didn't pick up a pencil or paintbrush for 42 straight days. And I've no never way. ever done that. But I was in a real funk. And uh, so I had a friend that need, needed a dog drawn, and I reluctantly did it. And well, we posted it on Facebook and boom, man, I think I, I think I've drawn like 45, 50 dogs since. Yeah. And the best part about drawing a dog is that they will look at it and they can't tell you that doesn't look like me. Right. That's what I like. about. It. <laughs> yeah. I was to draw a human. They go, well, you didn't get my nose right. Or you didn't yeah. get this right. But the dog looks fine. <laughs> I, 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 uh, I, did a dog, I did a dog last night like I finished it uh, this morning and you know she's going oh my god you captured him I'm thinking I captured the photo you know basically yeah I copy verbatim what I see but um but I do uh, I churn them out pretty quick but they're fun to do but uh, I'm, I don't do I don't do cats I charge nine million for a cat three and a half <laughs> seems fair seems okay fair. i got no cats it, it really uh yeah, you... I love, sorry no I, like, I i i love cats it's just that they've got a, a fur base that's so scattered and difficult to to really capture that i'd rather just do do a dog if i have to but like i say i i, I stray from sports to caricatures to sculpting i actually did some sculpting for uh oh. Star Trek show yeah. uh, that's coming, and uh, yeah, you know, that's uh, really funny. You talk about born, dogs. God, God gave me two, two choices: be a yeah. kid or be an artist. And uh, obviously, you know what I did. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, you talk about the dogs not being able to complain about, about what you do. It reminds me, <laughs> the reason the reason people say, you know, why, why, what is it about your career that made you want to get in front of a camera and do a podcast? I'm like, well, I mean, sailors, we're notoriously good storytellers. We sit around on the bridge of ships or on the decks of ships and we're talking all the time, right? And uh, I remember when I was, I was a trainee, oh, that was, well, 20 years ago, over 20 years ago. I was a cadet on board of an oil tanker. And the captain stopped to talk to me one day and he said, now, young fellow, he said, what do you want to do when you, uh, when you get up and you become a mate or a skipper yourself? And of course I was 18 years old and I was like, well, cap, I said, I'm single. I said, I think uh, the cruise ships is a spot to go for me. And he said, uh, he said, don't do it. I said, why? He says, it's the only cargo that talks back. 
<laughs> so <laughs> that's true. I always remember that. But. Anyways, yeah. this is not about me. Moving on. Actually, uh, if you go back to that one picture for a second, if you can, yeah. Yeah, uh, sure. there's a logo at the bottom, the Rose Trail. I yep. remember I used to, whenever I had to do some work for Dawn, even when Rose was alive, um, she would, uh, you know, sit me down at the kitchen table. Don's upstairs. Blah blah blah. Hit me down. But uh, when she passed, he uh, had me come to his house, and I sat at his uh, at his kitchen table, and he said, "I want you to draw like a kid. Like just don't do it. I don't want slick. I want you to draw like a kid." And uh, so I literally did that at his kitchen table and they used that logo as i did it like wow verbatim so it was so weird to actually do that job um one quick story about rose um well, i don't know if i, well, I don't know if don cherry eh. well there was a situation where uh they were trying to name the uh the mississauga junior a franchise and don cherry had bought it and um they had to name the um, name the team, and I get a call from Don Cherry saying, "Robin, Calgary, can you be at my place on Sunday?" Blah blah blah. And I said, "Yeah, okay, okay." So I get to his place, and what had happened was they had this contest in Mississauga, so that if you could name and come up with the design of uh, the new name of the team, um, the the person would get season tickets for the rest of their lives which oh, cool would have been three years really uh, how long the team was. but uh, what don cherry wanted to do when he sat me down is that he had all these designs that people had sent in from mississauga and they had already chosen the name ice dogs but they still had other names going out of there and don's going no 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 we're going to use the name ice dog but you see this one i like this one i like the head here i like this one here i like that can you actually put that all together? And I'm sitting there going, and uh, so when I do that, do I win? He goes, yeah, of course you're going to win. And I'm going, I don't think that's going to work because I work for you. I've done your shows. I've done your rock and sock. I just don't think that's going to work. I was being really honest with him. He's a bit frustrated, but weird because by the time i got home i had a message on my phone from rose going rob you're right you're right we're we're gonna go this way we're, we're not gonna do that. That's <laughs> but when don was upstairs what's the newfie kid that used to play for detroit his name starts with a c dan right? cleary cleary yeah. ryan it was his name dan cleary so dan cleary so um don had been um a big fan of cleary and he had uh, back here in Ontario at one time, we used to have those vans on the side of the road to take pictures of you uh, for speeding. Mm -hmm. And so I, I get to the kitchen. She's made me a cup of tea or something. I'm sitting there and she says, oh, come up to my fridge. And her fridge was just like lock solid with photographs of everything. And she said, so she points to this black and white picture and you can see this huge <coughs> white Lincoln. And you got, you got this huge pumpkin head silhouette and it's Don Cherry, right? And she says, look, look at how fast he was going. He was on his way to Belleville to see Dan Cleary. And I went, oh, no. And he says, well, wait, 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 take a look at this one. And I looked at it. It was an identical picture. It was like the same car, the same pumpkin head silhouette. And I go, where's that? He says, that's Don coming back from Belleville watching Dan Cleary, you know? So <laughs> this is... Funny, funny shit that you see on people's <laughs> bridge doors. You know? That's awesome. Excellent. Yeah, that's excellent. Okay, so I, I did a lacrosse celebrity game. I had guys like uh, Brendan. Ch no, Brendan didn't come that way. He went to another one. Uh, but I had guys like Stan Jonathan, um, Joe Neuendijk, uh a lot of. Uh, pro lacrosse players uh alan fru from glass tiger oh yeah actually walter walter gretzky was there um don was there uh wish i wish i knew this question was coming for I, I thought but yeah we had a lot of celebrities we had the toronto raptor dancers there we had uh 
um, just uh, a lot of radio personalities and TSN guys came out to play. So, and it was a promotion with these two lacrosse teams playing each other. So this is actually uh, at the side of uh, Don's house. He had to go get a suit on and, and he tried to pretend to rough up the kids. Actually, my kid with the monkey face, is, uh, that's Dylan and his best friend is Justin Wilson Kirby Follett. There goes the Follett name again. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Awesome. Well, these actually, interestingly enough, these two kids now are adults and they're business partners. Oh, cool. In a, in a, they do housing appraisals together. Oh, Pretty cool. Wow. They're, they're lifelong buddies, best man, you know, that kind of thing. That's All awesome. right. Next. Yeah, so I start, I had a buddy named John Morgan. John Morgan was um, partnered with uh, Tragically Hip, the uh, the actual band. They started a cannabis growth. Yep. growth Up, band. I believe it's called. Uh, so John John Morgan, um, his son was playing for my lacrosse team, and John Morgan was a firefighter, and um, he would always show up to my practices because he was our trainer. And he always stunk a dope. I, like I say to my assistant coach, I said, this guy's fucking plowed every time. You shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> I was sure what was going on, right? He was, he was actually, a, uh, he was in the grow up business. He was a real hands on guy. So he would actually go into those grow ups and do all, I, I, I don't know how it is, but it's the light bulbs and pruning and, but yeah, he stunk a dope all the time. But he made off like a bandit when they uh, sold, sold off his share. So he did really, really well. So he knew a lot of guys in, in the cannabis community. And I, I was asked if I would do a painting of uh, Bob Marley. And the tradition, there's something traditional between um, Rastafarians and lions. And everybody out there who knows about it will look, well, what are you doing? Why would you... Do a painting that you didn't research and i'm guilty i i put a lion with bob marley uh uh with a you know smoking smoke the big dude which you like to do and uh but i wanted i i, I this kind of was like my my uh gourd downy i wanted to show like if you look at the bottom section of that painting you can see that i'm recovering the shapes of all those leaves and i actually went around the whole painting to cover those uh the shapes so if you actually see that painting in its finished form it might be in the later part but yeah so and i i also made this really cool uh smoke coming from the dude um it's kind of going through the, the nose of the lion so he's catching a buzz too i guess oh wow so yeah, yeah but that was that was a fun piece and the interesting thing about uh, marijuana leaves is if you try to glue them down, it's like a wrestling match. Um, oh, is that? You get the one leaf down, and it's trying to get back up. It's, it's almost like <laughs> trying to put a lobster in a boiling pot, which my dad always said was a bad thing to do. My dad yeah. did Cape Breton. I don't know how the Newfies do it, but... Uh, we've done lots of that. But, Still you do. know what I mean? Like uh, Every time I glue the leaf down, it start to try to escape. I'm thinking, these freaking things are alive. right? Yeah. So I finally did glue them down, and they stayed down, and then I painted right over top of them so what you see on the right was before and then you see the process so it was that's amazing okay next does uh does painting on the the the, the marijuana leaves bring up the street value of your fucking of your work or <laughs> <laughs> the, no, the original anyway since they legalized it, I mean, you're nothing on that so these are these are like the dogs that i was telling you about but it's interesting because when i draw them um, i literally oh so we're, we're coming back to johnny Tavares. so what you guys are seeing right now is the backs of my johnny Tavares with the a on the jersey remember i told you that i spent like thousands of dollars getting those ones with the a's well guess what i just flip it over and i use the backs of them so i'm making my money back on no the, way yeah that's what i've been doing Thirteen hundred and sixty-five dollars is the math on that paper. <laughs> okay. So, anyways, each one of those things is literally the back of a Johnny Tavares print. So, if anybody actually, in the year three thousand, take it apart, they're going to say, "What's the fucking hockey player doing on the back?" <laughs> and 
So people actually send me photos uh, just on emails or on text messages or whatever they want. And uh, I pick the best picture that makes, makes it feel right. Like the, actually the one on the left, the, the, the dog with the ball, that I did that for a friend of mine who his dog had died the day before. And I drew that and gave it to him the next day. I left it on his driveway at his front door. And, and uh, uh. I don't. Like, I, I just know that it, it was the right thing to do, you know? Yeah, that's and beautiful that's work, it. man. Now, I don't do freebies all the time, folks. I'm just telling you that. Yeah, that's right. In this special so, case, he was... Got to keep the lights on. He's a high school guy, and uh, I knew he was a hurt guy, and uh, he's a single guy, and that dog meant everything to him, so that's why I did it. Listen, Rob, don't confuse us either for people who aren't who aren't uh, too proud to take to take freebies. All right, yeah, <laughs> we'll, we will take whatever yeah. you whatever you got. I, uh, that's actually uh, I did a character to Don Cherry, and because uh, he always told me that he had uh, an experience again with the Leafs, and I don't think he ever. I, I'm I'm not sure if he ever played an exhibition game, but I always loved drawing his big pumpkin head. <laughs> And I also, <laughs> I also, uh, I did another caricature of him of actually uh, receiving. He was on, uh, I think it was Rochester, and they won the Calder Cup. And uh, the other guy that was in the picture was a guy named Jack Butterfield. I think it's Jack, but uh, Don Cherry will yeah. go and give me shit saying it wasn't him. But anyways, uh, he'll give me shit for doing this. But this was actually in uh, Don Cherry's book, and uh, I. I was uh, really pleasantly surprised when I was in a uh, bookstore and I opened it up and I was, oh, he's <laughs> there. It is. Yeah. You get some. You get some pleasant surprises, and you're probably going to say, "Well, why wouldn't you get paid for that?" You know what? It's okay. I'm, I, like, I'm cool with that. This is, uh, yeah, the Wendell. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we were doing this job for like the thing was Cooper. If you look at Wendell's helmet, that helmet wasn't out at the time. So I had to create the helmet that they were actually manually. Like they're actually. Oh, okay. So nobody had ever seen it. They had never seen the uh, the Supreme Bauer hockey stick. Let me tell you the story. I, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Wendell made a buck twenty five for every one of those hockey sticks sold. Whoa. Uh, oh, no way. That's what I try to remember, but I, I'm probably going to. Somebody's going to challenge me on that. And, I uh, accept the challenge. I may be wrong, but he did make a good buck on it. Um, good for him. Cooper, Cooper and Bauer, they were three divisions. They had the stick division, they had the Cooper helmet, and they had the skates division. And all three um, were supposed to pull up the money to do the, uh, the painting and everything. And when I got through the painting, almost three quarters, um, the Bauer skate guys decided to pull out and we were only a week away from launching this at uh, uh, yeah. Don Cherry's Grapevine in Toronto, right by the, where the Blue Jays play. And uh, that's where uh, when you see Wendell and myself with the painting. But we had it veiled. The painting was veiled. And, um, well, when, when I heard that Bauer pulled out, I think that they thought that I was going to keep the skates in. But those fuckers, <laughs> I, no. I painted them up. As you can see, I cut the like people were wondering why I uh, I didn't do the full body and uh, well I'm telling you why because yeah. they backed out and so I kept my eye on the guy that was part of that crew when the when, when he pulled the veil down I just wanted to kind of catch his eye and I knew he'd look right at me <laughs> so I was just like catch your cat <laughs> way to go you well, well anyway, done. So, uh, yeah, so uh, actually, Wendell's got that on his wall at his house. So, yeah, there it is. There it yeah, is. Oh. this is Wendell, but this is also our buddy Patty, who uh, jumps on the podcast every once in a while, and he's the biggest Wendell Clark fan ever, and he's got the same print on his wall as well, which that, is really... Is that my print as well? Yep, yep. Oh, wow, that's kind of cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, no, and this guy, this guy loves his memorabilia and everything uh, Wendell and everything I, leaves. Honestly, at the time that I did it, I don't think Wendell liked the painting. Oh. I don't think he liked the painting, but you know what? He just kind of kept his face and kept his, you know, he, I, I don't think he really, he really gave a shit, to tell you the truth. He, uh, I think that 
he was all about the hockey, all about the game. You know, I I actually uh, ran into him a few times, obviously, and you know we always kept it as a business business relationship. But uh, he's a good dude. He's a interesting guy. I think he uh, he lived at uh, in a quad quad place with four other people. Like they had his agent Donnie Meehan was in one unit and. What's his name? Tyler Cranston was in another unit, and then Wendell was in another unit, and then Manderville and Zezel were in another unit. So there was four of them. And I, I, uh, I remember being at Wendell's place once there, and it was kind of funny because you you come into his place and he's got a pool table, and right beside it was a hot tub. So you just knew that whatever was happening at the Madison Bar that night you get the girls there, shoot pool, get them in the tub, and then in the next room, you know what happens. Oh, yeah. it, was, it was great. It's the way it goes. Yeah. Seeing a young guy celebrating like that, you know? So, of course. Yeah, but I, I also just remember a quick story I was going to tell you guys. Uh, when, you know, being with the Toronto Sun, I had a press pass, so I was allowed to go to the gardens at all times, and uh, um, I was just the guy who would sit in stands and just watch the practice and I wouldn't say anything. And, you know, players were there and, you know, some, sometimes they would nod at you and whatever, you know, but I, I never went out of my way to be introductory to myself. And so uh, here, I got a cartoon I'll show you. I did it. It was at a time when Tom Watt, Tom Watts was, um, was the coach of the Toronto Maple Leafs, and he had a real. I hope I still have it here. Yeah, so he had a real issue with John Cordick. I think John Cordick was doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes. Obviously, it came out later. The after he died. Yeah. But, um, I did this cartoon of of um, Cordick yeah. hanging on a clothesline, being hung out to dry because. He's basically being blamed for all the shit that was going on in Leaf Leafland, and you know I had a checklist: is he washed up? Is he cleaned up? Suspended? Or is he being hung out to dry? So I did that, right? And cool. it was just a cartoon, and so yeah. the following week, and he was being suspended and everything, and you know they were talking about it. But I was um, down by the dressing room door, and. I was just standing there. I, I'm pretty sure I was talking to Bob McKenzie, and maybe I should talk to Bob about that. But what happened was, is that while I was talking to him, Cord came off the ice and he was heading to the dressing room. And then all of a sudden, he lunged across and grabbed me and fired me up against the wall. No way. Like, I mean, I'm I'm up against the wall, and he's got his face to me, and he's calling me a mutter fudder, and all yeah. that. You know, I would fucking kick your ass and all that stuff and fucking. And all of a sudden they get us between them, right? And I'm like, all of a sudden I'm getting tough guy, right? Like yeah. skinny me. I mean, what do you mean? I said, <clears throat> and then he's standing at the door. He said, I fucking eat you alive. And I'm like, hey, I said, the next time I do a cartoon of you, you're gonna be going to New Market, right? <laughs> and New Market was the miners yeah. the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah. And uh, Saints following weekend, I find out that that Cordic's heading to New Market. So I did this. <laughs> well, one second. This cartoon me... of him standing <laughs> the city limits, crossing out the uh, population and adding a one, and uh, that was yeah. fast. like I honestly. I, You're a brave man. I was a brave man, but I did it. I told him I would do it, and I did it. But I, uh, you know, you know, once you see what had happened, uh, in the end, uh, I mean, I feel bad. That yeah. I actually did it to him, but. I did it to him. You gotta live with that, right? Yeah, I mean, it was you were just doing your job as a, you know, you were getting interested in a, well, in the paper. I mean, I you were know. current I events. But I didn't know how he found me because, I like, I'm like a, a fly on the wall. There, I, I didn't rub with anybody. I just kind of kept to myself. Somehow he found out that I was the guy who did it. Oh yeah, he, yeah, oh yeah. But he had me. Listen, he had me. Like his hands were two of mine. He oh for big, sure he's just a big strong kid and oh for sure tough. holy smokes i knew i was in trouble 
So, okay. Yeah, we did that one. We're good. Yeah, this is the, I, I was um, entered into, a, they entered me into a contest and I never go into contests ever because I don't like to lose. So, uh, but I did enter this contest and it was the paint Wayne Gretzky and they selected mine over a uh, hundred entries, I guess. And so you, on the right, you see the printed version, like the left. And uh, um, yeah, I mean, I, I remember like I captured his humpback, the way he skates. I, I really wanted to bring my cartoony caricature feel to it by making that stick come right at yes. me. Yes, yeah, it pops, probably, really pops, yep. Yeah, that was probably the biggest thing. But um, the one thing that people don't understand in the art world is that there's a lot of people that draw from photographs, obviously. But the problem, uh, here, here's the reason why uh, photographs are suspect, because a camera is only one-eyed. It takes a picture of, like, to give you an example, if you watch, uh, you go and look at a old um, Sports Illustrated, you'll see a picture of Joe Montana throwing a ball directly at you or the camera. And um, the hand, the hand is smaller than the face, when in fact, if the hand's coming towards you, shouldn't it be larger? So if right. you guys watch Marvel magazines and you see Superman, Superman's hand is here. Now look at the size of my head, right? My head's mm -hmm. smaller than the hand. Well, that's, that's where I was really captivated by um, utilizing the camera and interpreting, interpreting what the camera was giving me, but also using my resources for my own um, learning mechanism of how things work. So it, you'll see that the one leg is fading into the background. Well, cameras do that. So I decided to take it even further by really fading it out. So there are things that I did um, that I still continue to do today that really uh, I use photographs, but I also realize that I'm enhancing things. You know, there's guys yeah, right. that can take an absolute photograph and give you a photograph. But if if they if uh, you tell them to draw the human anatomy out of their head, they they're they're lost. That's right. They yeah. don't know how to do it. So I mean, the, the the term being an artist, I think artist is is a person that's creative, somebody that changes things, just like. Um, but everybody else that's just copying a photograph verbatim, you, you know what? What are, you're photo you're copying what a photographer already did. So that yep. photographer is actually getting ripped off. So this, <laughs> yeah. uh, this picture was actually done from a photograph, but I make so many changes that a photographer can't sue me. That's right. Because photographers will sue you if you oh, yeah. use their image, especially in advertising, they'll sue your ass. So uh, that's what I do. I, I deliberately go out of my way so that if his, I'll, I'll literally move his arm to another place just to change it up. But yes, I am using the guy's images, but I even change it up, even in the face so that they can't catch me. Yeah. I love the glare off the Eastern aluminum as well. That's yeah. Got that, that's a, that's dorky stuff. I, I use the, the swamp thing in the back there to get that effect. No. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. That's uh, we, uh, when the, when the Toronto Maple Leafs didn't make the playoffs again, um, again. we had, yeah. Uh, this is back when Johnny, this is the night that Johnny missed an open net. He would have won the scoring uh, in the NHL. But, uh, oh, okay, Brown, right, right, right. Yeah. This yeah. is the last game. So we went down to Pittsburgh. And what happened was uh, we decided to turn a bar, uh, Monaghan's Bar and Grill in Oakville, into um, Islander uh, Central. So that the whole town of Oakville was going to root for Johnny. So I actually changed the New York Islander logo and the N and the Y was J and T, J, J Tavares. And it, it, okay. looks, it looks just like the logo, except it's the J and T. But um, these four jerseys we brought down for him to sign so that we could do giveaways at the bar in Oakville. So I just took these guys. So those two little kids that you saw, um, Dylan and uh, uh, Kirby Follett is there, and my daughter. So I took them all down and we had jerseys. We wore these jerseys and 
if you go into Pittsburgh wearing New York Islander jerseys, this is a bad move to make, especially yeah, when you're in the men's room and certain guys trying to piss on your leg, you know, which yeah. happened. You know, <laughs> no, after one of the guys classy picture but it wasn't me but i'll tell you a funny story like johnny comes out of the dress like you know he comes out of the dressing room you see how the the arena is empty and and the only other people are people in the stands behind and they're all family members waiting for their their kids the sons to come out well these two clowns dylan and justin grab johnny just like when they were kids in the dressing room you know how you, i told you about sibling rivalry johnny's in a suit and they got him by the feet and his hands and they're, they're dragging him up the stairs and you, this guy's a superstar hockey player and uh, it was pretty <laughs> comical i thought that the security were co coming to get us but johnny was laughing about it but yeah but that's what i mean like he's still he's still johnny he's still a kid you know yeah so anyways uh yeah that was a great trip we actually drove down there it took us four and a half hours and it took us four and a half hours to get back and guess we had to drive me you know, oh yeah this, is, uh, this i did this for johnny for his 21st birthday so he could okay, so that's the one. officially drive legal but his mom told me that he had already um um gunned two of his uh bmws i think what is that a bmw or what? yeah it's a beamer yeah he, he banged up two beamers uh because <laughs> he's johnny so um <laughs> i i put him in a bumper car and uh I hooked up the, uh, you know, that thing behind that hooks up to the electrical wiring. I hooked it up to yep. the, uh, Las the Vegas. that's where he celebrated his, uh, his, uh, 21st, 21st, but it, this will give you an indication. He's a dork. Yeah. Uh, guess what his favorite beer is. Moosehead. Mooseheads. Oh, uh, no way. What are you doing? So <laughs> all the, <laughs> all the bumper stickers, all the bumper stickers are like in the one corner is the Oakville lacrosse one the new york islanders the mississauga tomahawks he played for buffalo band it's team canada london knights oshawa and the uh, he played for the marlies in uh in minor hockey yep and Marl, Marl, actually, up? actually uh um the picture of the queen if you can get real close to it uh that's his mom in there that's part oh of, no way yeah i don't know she had, the other thing too is that johnny's nickname back on the team was fly because um he used to watch his uncle on videos all the time and his uncle used to use this one thing that he dove across the net you're actually allowed to leap through the crease as long as your feet don't touch he leaped through the crease and he'd throw the ball far corner and the goalie would get beat every time it's a fantastic play like if you ever look at it on uh youtube it's it's amazing to see it happen well johnny he's like I told you he's as slow as can be, uh, but he wanted to dive across the crease this one game. And when he dived, he landed like a rock. Like he didn't even get, he didn't get any acceleration this way. He just went boom. And so when he got to the bench, we started calling him fly, right? So when I actually framed this thing up, um, it was in a nice frame, but in below, I found a beautiful oak leaf and I put it inside an encircled embedment but I spray painted the the uh, oak leaf gold but I found this green dead fly in my studio on the wall <laughs> it was a bitch I'll tell you but use all the glue on the four legs and I pinned it to that fly right so I sent it to uh I don't think well, I was barred for me up and she says, there's a fly stuck in the painting, right? So she actually thought that the fly got into the painting and I framed, I put the fly in there on purpose. <laughs> Anyways, Johnny was, he was the only one who got it. When he looked at that, he went, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, was so anyways, yeah. So that was, uh, yeah, this was, uh, I ran a hockey or lacrosse camp. So all these kids that you see in here were all from my team and there's actually a couple of guys that went on to pro lacrosse, but uh, Johnny was in my camp and uh, um, he would bring lunches this big, like his mom, she's Polish, right? From Polish descent. So they, they would give him these lunches that could feed the whole dressing room, but Johnny could just, <laughs> and he could power it back. But 
Yeah, we did a camp together and then uh, they ran a story on this and there's some good quotes that Johnny talked about our program and how it helped them. So there's there's a lot of things that we put into that program. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you guys an acronym, Trulsapondo, Trulsapondo. So trust, Pondo. trust, respect, unselfishness, listen to instructions, stick to the game plan, attention to details, preparation, accountability, win the small battles, no fear, uh, discipline over emotion, outwit, outwork, outwill. And we live by that. That was our creed. And after every game or even before every game, we would recite that because something would happen in that game that one of those, those commandments of that Trulsa Pondo would jump out. Uh, you'd say to Johnny, um, well, what jumps out in, in this in this game? Attention to details or win the small battles. That was always a, a good one. The small battles, uh, I'll tell you, if you've got a team that wins the small battles, that's when you see the scoreboard in your favor, you know? So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, so Johnny lives by the, that Charles Pondo. Now, he doesn't remember the word Charles Pondo because I've honed it, but all those, like I, I decided to make it a word that nobody's ever used, but everybody knows it. So all the teams that I've coached the last 10 years know Charles Pondo. Um, Johnny and my team, they just knew the commandments. We didn't have a, a, a thing to recite. It just, it just came to me. So the, the principles that make that kid, uh, I'm not saying that we did it. I think that um, whatever happened in the hockey world, I think their coaches did a fabulous job with John and honing him what he is too. But I think that we're like a village, right? We're all trying to make everybody the best that they can be, right? Yeah. My opinion, uh, I mean, John Tavares has been a, a favorite player of mine long before he became a Maple Leaf. That just was the icing on the cake for me. But the thing that I always, cause I, I fell in love with John Tavares in his World Junior days. I mean, he, I just thought he was the greatest hockey player of all time. Oh, yeah. uh, but I always said, I feel like John Tavares has cherry picked life. Like he's really, he's really went into life and took all the good things out of life that he needed to make himself. And because uh, I mean, he, he, to me, he's just an exemplary, hum, exemplary human. I mean, he's just, there's everything about him is, is fantastic as an individual. And then you look at his work ethic and his skill sets and he's just cherry picked life. And, uh, and that's why I'm such a huge fan of his for no other reason than that, to be honest. That's a big amen right there. Yep. He is, he is what he is. Out there. Uh, these are like private commissions. I have no idea where this person wanted Tom Petty in that painting, but I am an artist that I'm a hired gun. And if you want, if you want me to put uh, Dolly Parton in there, I'll put Dolly Parton. In there. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, I had a lot of fun doing the Keith. Yeah. I just Keith couldn't figure out why we put Petty in. But hey, you know what? Um, um, I really love working on his fingers because he has that big skull in that one. Yeah. Finger. I knew that, that famous skull ring. Right? Yeah. And and I also noticed that he wears those sweatbands on his head and. He, he pulls it right back so he's got like a six head instead of a forehead <laughs> yeah. and uh yeah so i had fun doing that and i, I really I, I love doing cigarettes even though that they're bad for you i just love the smoke coming off of it it's fun i like that you haven't heard yeah. keith so, richards anyway why why he had a pink guitar is because the client wanted him to have this pink guitar yeah this is uh wendell and i we were at the duke street diner right across the street from um Toronto Sun. Well, the Toronto Sun is a bit of a walk, but um, yeah, Wendell and I signed all these prints and uh, had a great dinner there from uh, a buddy of mine who owned the bar named Jim Kalutis and Billy Kalutis. They fed us and uh, Wendell was really, really, he thought the food was fantastic. He went upstairs and met Jim Kalutis' family and they were all little kids. And I think Wendell actually inspired the one little kid because he wound up at least getting a scholarship at uh, Doverport as a goaltender in the, in the uh, university. And uh, he actually wound up going to the SPHL. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, um, Wendell was taking shots on him upstairs with a Nerf ball. Uh, so it was kind of cool to see a, a big kid and a little kid having yeah. fun. You know? Yeah. Remember the first time I seen this photo, was my, first thing, my first thing was, now which guy is Wendell Clark? Oh, yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, 
It's like, is that Wendell Clark in the stunt double? I'm like, what? What is I this? Think, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, you, get, you can smoke me no matter what. <laughs> yeah, this is me shaking hands with uh, Cal Ripken. I like the picture in uh, on the big jumbotron screen. You can see the painting. Actually, I think I I, I have the uh, the newspaper clipping. I can show it in that little corner. Oh, cool. It's right there. That was that was the newspaper picture of uh, me presenting the thing. I found I found that when. Uh, it triggered my memories so yeah so yeah keep going guys i didn't i didn't mean to oh. derail it so oh, uh, i always jump back Rampkin's a big one okay. yeah yeah that, that was one week after 9 11 so the whole uh, the, the whole sports world was shut down yes it was yeah. so this is a type of things that i do for clients where um there's somebody in the crowd that's actually the client that bought this from me but oh, nice. he didn't know i was doing it i found his picture on facebook and dropped it in and so he never knew he was in there for about a week until he called me <laughs> no, no way yeah so but when i do these drawings if you look at the paper all i do is i i start from using a prismacolor pencil and i just start drawing and and see how it unfolds i i, I don't do roughs <laughs> When I do these things, I just draw. And if there's a screw up, I just leave it and keep going. But um, these got popular because uh, I wound up doing another one for the guy. And I think you might have it up ahead. I don't know. Is it the one with the last shot with Ka Kawhi Leonard? Uh, I don't think I have that one. Oh, okay. These are actually leaves. So I can show you one that's the real deal. You guys want to yep. show this one? Um, this is, these, these are. These leaves are hand picked and laid down to form the shape of leaves. And then I, I literally, I don't know if you can see it, but it's, 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 it's a dog's breakfast. That's all I can say. It's like leaves are actually touching the glass here and it's so ripply, but I do oh, the actual great. logo on there. And these, these are the actual leaves on the very edges, right? And um, yeah, so. Oh, fantastic. Anyways, so keep it going, boys. Yep. Sorry, boy. Yep. Yeah. So I, I tried them in white red. Yeah, this is Gary Batman. <laughs> I, this is when they, they had the lockout, and Gary Batman was an asshole, in my opinion. Now, if Gary does see this, I've changed my mind. I think he's done great things for the game, but I just didn't like the, all these shutdowns and lockouts and everything. And I knew what he was doing, but he was being an asshole. So if you actually look at the, uh, it looks like an asterisk on the shield. It's a bomb. That you never see. Never <laughs> That's the rectum. <laughs> it's a sphincter muscle, right? And so yeah. actually, if you look at the, uh, the, the logo on the top, it's a, uh, it's a T's form of butthole. Like there's a butt, right? So there's a butthole. And, uh, the details are incredible. Buttholes on the, uh, the leather helmet. So I, I found Captain America and I like that kind of helmet. So I put all these little details into it. But you know, like I got it as a plug and I got the Stanley Cup as the rubber thing from the uh, plunger. Yeah. plunger. Yeah. Six pack of beer. He's got the gold jock strap. Who knows what that means? But uh, if you look at the logos on his chest, those little circles, they're all little pucks, but it spells not. <laughs> and he's got a cape for the American. I, I know I, I kind of spent too much time on that poor bugger, but. No, it's great. Yeah, it was fun to do. And I gave him, I gave him um, figure skates because I, I just couldn't see him wearing real hockey skates. So should we boo Batman now? I like guess just boo. <laughs> yeah. Like I say, you know, I think he's done great, great things. Yeah. In the game, so. Yeah. yeah. So the unfortunately we got a, a blurry Gord Downey, but th there you go. Um, yeah. Those things are for sale. Like uh, uh, I think they're twenty three by twenty in size, and they they sell for one hundred and fifty framed up. Uh, the one on the left is actual leaves, and uh, I paint Gord Downey on 
the single leaf and then I mount it on the top of that circular the design. And the leaf that's in the uh, embedded thing, I put the Tragically Hip logo in there. Mm -hmm. I, I was selling those for like five, 600 bucks a piece. But uh, there is a lot of work that goes into those. Little no things. doubt. You a, you a fan of the hip yourself, Rob? Or? Yeah, I love the hip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. us too. Yeah, big time. Rehearsals, isn't it? What they say? Uh, yeah, this is a uh, Gord Down or uh, Gord Gord. Yeah, another yeah, the Gord. Yeah, he was that's him signing a painting that I did at the Consmite dinner right at the table where I I had just finished the painting. So it was nice. It was, it was good to meet him. Actually, the painting wasn't done, but I had to get him to sign because he had to get up to the head table. Because if you look at the one leg, I didn't get a chance to paint the, the white oh. band. Yeah. But I, I finished it once it was done, yeah. Oh, yeah he really liked cool. that painting. He asked I, me if it was for sale. I, I, there wasn't much I could say because it was being auctioned off. That was, that was what I was doing, so. Oh, uh, no. Yeah. Yeah, this is me and uh, I'm, this is 2014. It's two months before the 70th anniversary for um, the uh, D-Day. D -Day. And mm. um, I was sent over with a crew of guys. And we were all volunteers, three French Canadians and the English guy. Uh, so we had to um, take down uh, all the, the paint because these things hadn't been painted since the 40s. And so we had to uh, refurbish two of these uh, military installments. And we finished um, three days ahead of schedule. So uh, I decided to bolt and uh, I went and rented a car and I went to Dieppe because one of my friend's father was in Dieppe during World War II. So I wanted to make a pil pilgrimage there. Then I, I, uh, I went right across France. I wound up at Bimmy Ridge. I think I had seven hundred dollars in speeding tickets uh, oh, no because way. they have all those um, cameras on the highway. And yeah. If you get on a French highway and you're and you got a Frenchman behind you, they're freaking out if you don't speed, right? So yeah. I'm, I'm getting pushed to speed, so I speed and I had seven hundred tickets. But um, what you see on the far left was my inspiration as I, I got to uh, this town in Belgium called Eeps, and it's YP. Y P S E or something that's spelled it's Eeps. And there were some major, major battles there. You probably probably heard the word Passchendaele. Yeah. So the, all those area, that whole area was just crazy. Like, I mean, people are still getting killed from um unexploded bombs from yeah, that's right. crazy. And uh, so uh this was my inspiration. I was actually in the very spot, supposedly. Uh, where he, uh, John McRae, wrote the, uh, the poem, um, Flanders Field. Yep. And so I just had this locked in my head. Now, if you guys take a look at the white shape that's embedded, uh, all the gravestones in the military force um, have that exact circle embedded into the tombstone with the Canadian flag and then who the soldier is that, that gave his life for our country. So that's the shape that I wanted to really um, get across. And I actually went to a, a lawyer and I actually secured the rights to that shape because the Canadian military hadn't been in a war which needed these kind of tombstones since uh, uh, World War II. I know that Korea, it was not considered a war, it was something else, but Some they said conflict, yeah. they never renewed that copyright so for 15 it cost me 1500 bucks i own the copyright i could have actually gone out and made these tombstones and made it work and i would have been making out like a bandit but uh, my lawyer phoned me and said that the canadian uh, military overrode my copyright oh so okay. i lost it so what i did was i came up with a plan b and if you use a real real maple leaf that's made by god let's say and you pick it you dry it you paint it and you put it on and it looks like their copyright it isn't theirs it's oh. the one of a kind because copyright infringement is when you multiple you know, multiple, yeah. multiple things so 
Yeah, every one of these things I do one at a time. As a matter of fact, I'm doing 25 of these this weekend for the Legion um, okay. they just made an order. But yeah, uh, so I had that poem uh, etched in old copper gold, copper and gold mixed together. And it was fairly expensive to do that. But I wanted to get the essence of the antiquated look. I wanted it to look like a 1918 piece, you know? Like yeah. they used to use those crazy looking banners across the top of that. Yep. So that was, uh, that was to me, uh, I think that what really sold it was, I don't know if you've got that picture of the heart with the gravestone. I don't know if you uh, I'm not so sure I was, I, my dad was World War II vet and his best friend was killed in Holland during uh, Operation mm -hmm. Market Garden and he was shot by a sniper and he was buried in a little town called Grosbeek and I knew that I had to go see him. I had to go visit my dad. It was sort of, I had to fulfill this, right? And I remember getting to that graveyard at seven o'clock at night and the sun was going down and it was just me and like 3,000 3, soldiers laying there resting. And it was, it was very, very emotional. I don't know what, it, you know, you oh, caught looks. up in something, you're by yourself and you finally get to where you want. And I literally did not know where he was buried. I had to walk to every grave. And the cool thing was, and I, I, if I ever get a chance to do it again, I'm going there with 3,000 poppies in a bag and every one of those graves is going to get a poppy. But when I left Canada, I had 62 poppies in my in the bag because that's how many people were in the town of Donkin, which is just south of Glace Bay. Um, and that's where George, George came from. And um, when I found his grave, I spent about 10 minutes making a big, huge heart shape of using poppies, right? And I left that there. And honest to God, man, I've got that picture. And every time I see it, I got to stop and just take a good look at it. It's kind of cool to meet your dad's buddy, but yes. in a weird way, because uh, obviously he's not, he's it's really not quite not the experience. There. But to be there, to know that uh, another McDougal came to, to visit and his name was George McDonald. So yeah, McDougal McDonald. So it was great. It was really great to mm -hmm. do. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed that trip. That's uh yeah, and that's Sunday myself. That's uh oh no, no, that's Wendell. No, no, that's oh, no, I thought that was Wendell Clark. Yeah. Copyright infringement on Wendell Clark's appearance. <laughs> so, yeah, we did that signing. Uh, I don't know why they made us pose like that, but yeah, that was in the paper. Nice. Yeah. That's Sunday. That's what it was, yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is me. I'm coaching Team Australia. Um, honestly, I coached a lot of lacrosse, and uh, Australia was looking for somebody to teach them the box game. And um, they, the weird thing is, is my ex-wife is Australian, but it had nothing to do with um, her at all. I mean, she's Australian, but uh, Team Australia phoned me up and asked me if I would um, come down there and teach them the game of lacrosse and then bring them up to the, the world championships. And oh, cool. uh, yeah, so I went down in 2003 during SARS. I don't know if you guys remember SARS. Oh, oh I do. Uh, I got stuck in quarantine down there in Australia. So it, was, uh, it wasn't fun back then. But uh, yeah, I coached these guys for three, uh, three different tournaments. And uh, one was in, uh, well, the cool thing was my son got to play for me for team australia because his mom was australian oh and no way so he would like no offense to you dylan if you're ever watching this but you you weren't going to make team Canada, but <laughs> you, you were a lot to make team australia so he, <laughs> and, and dylan did a great job no. but um i do remember our very first game these guys had never played um uh, team canada and team canada was the best in the world they had john Tavares's. um uncle on there and everything and uh i do remember that i was interviewed at the end of the first period and they asked me what i thought after we were down 17 nothing and i said well we were right in the game until the national anthem was over. <laughs> <laughs> but australians are a funny bunch eh? like they yeah they, 
they do all these rules. They impose all these rules. Like, I mean, you're going to charge $2 if you're late for this and do the next thing you know, there's uh, by the middle of the tournament, they're all breaking the rules. Right. And uh, one particular day we, we had a horrendous tournament because they were just getting their asses kicked and they weren't very disciplined, but they're really amazing athletes, but they, they just were gelling as a team. But one morning we had a, a team meeting where everybody's supposed to be there at eight o'clock in the morning. I get to the lobby and there, there's like six of my players all sleeping in the lobby on the couches, which didn't look good, right? It's not good optics. They're sleeping on the couch. They're sleeping behind the couch. They're under, under the curtains. And I'm going, what's wrong with these guys? And where's the rest of the team? So I go up to the second floor, which is our floor, and I'm walking down the hall, and there's a sock on the door, sock on the door, sock on the door, sock on the door. <laughs> and I'm going, ah. So that's why all these guys are sleeping downstairs, because all these guys have got girls in the room, right? So yeah. I bang in. Then I get to my son's door, and there's no sock on the door. So I, I knock <laughs> the door. And my son's there. I said, why aren't you down here? He says, I slept in. I said, get your ass down he says he says knacker was fucking fucking a chick all night and he was doing it right on top of me i couldn't get to sleep <laughs> <laughs> so the premise of our meeting was when i got to got them down to the restroom before a game i said you know this is the very first time that i actually witnessed team on this, this team you know? <laughs> <What> <laughs> so, um, so because we were considered a shitty team at the end of the tournament, even the tournament officials were kind of lagging. Like we were in uh, Prague, Czechoslovakia, and it's our final game of the year, and we're playing United, uh, we're playing England. And they were doing our warm ups and pre game, and the refs come up to us and said, Yeah, the guys, uh, the guys over there at the penalty box, uh, they lost your national anthem. So we're just going to go, go ahead and play the game. I said, no, whoa, 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 wait a minute. And I said, come back here. And the ref says, what? And I says, hey, if I get my team to sing the national anthem, would you do, Would you allow us to do that? He goes, yeah, sure. Okay. So I got uh, Kefa, who was our captain at the time. I think it was him or Hammond. Um, and I said, I want you to get your guys together. You line up on, on the, the line, and I want you guys to do your best to sing the national anthem. And it was a it was probably the best highlight of the tournament when the arena was silent. Well, it was silent because no one's there, but it was also uh, just full of parents and family and everything because it wasn't a very well attended game. But these guys, when they sang that song, uh, their national anthem, it was so loud in the arena. You know what happened? The English team all stood on their line and they started to sing uh, God Save the Queen. And some goof in the clown from England had one of those kazoos that goes, eh, 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 you know, it was great. Yeah. It was great timing, but that was the, that, that was a great tournament at the end of the, the, the game, uh, the Aussies and the, the Brits got together and shook hands and they were actually pretty happy and proud that they actually did that. That was a pretty cool thing. Very cool. So this is James Dunn. And if you look down at James' uh, right leg, James was 12 years old. He had um, the exact same cancer as uh, Terry Fox. And Terry had to have his um, leg removed right at the thigh down. Now, in James' case, uh, when they removed his lower leg, they took his foot off and literally attached his foot backwards so his heel was facing you in this picture and his foot would be backwards and the reason that they did that so that when he had his prosthetics he could hook them on with comfort and he could have full mobility with his 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 actual ankle became his knee now it was a really fantastic like to, to see it without the uh, prosthetic on it's it's pretty odd looking but very effective looking so um, how I met James was through Bob McKenzie. McKenzie gave me a call and it was actually the night that James was to have the surgery. So somehow Bob McKenzie hooked up with James and uh, anyways, he uh, wound up 
um, Bob gave me a call one night and says, can you help me out? Like, and I said, yeah, what do you want me to do? Like, I'm there, let's jump in. So um, I wound up giving him a lot of apparel and, and artwork to do fundraisers like this one. But um, when he turned 15, he, the cancer came back just like Terry Fox's did in his lungs, which is not a good sign when it returns. But somehow the chemotherapy that James took uh, worked. And I think James now is 20 years old and he's probably the top player on our sledge team for Team Canada right now. Oh, wow. And so it's a great, he's a great story. And he's a, he's a really good kid, like uh, solid. His mom and dad, his whole family, great, great people. And uh, um, he's, uh, James has had a lot of support. Both Bob and I still, uh, do James uh, will try to attend his games and stuff like that. And pretty amazing to, to watch a sledge hockey game. I'll tell you, it's, a, it's a pretty dirty, rough game. Yeah, they there's, had the world championship there in, in <clears throat> Newfoundland a couple of years ago. And I was gone at the time. I, I didn't get to see it. Amazing? Yeah. Crazy. He's, uh, this kid's uh he's skilled. He's a, uh, like, I, and he's actually a big kid. Like right here, he's, He's probably 18 years old, but I think he's like 6'3 now, but he's a big dude. Um, I think he would have gone somewhere in hockey had me uh, had this not happened to him. Mm -hmm. But look at it shows you his athleticism. Yeah, absolutely. I, I just I just like that. I don't know. Take a look at the it looks like there's just too many freaking hands in there. Yeah, I know. You know, I saw that bottom one. The bottom one doesn't look right. Yeah, that's really how, I guess that's his hand. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah, this is right hand, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, it's definitely not your hand. <laughs> your <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. I saw that earlier. Yeah, yeah this is when Brian <clears throat> came to Toronto. I don't know if you guys uh, were popular with the Leafs, uh, like you like the Leafs like you do, but this is when oh, yeah. he went down and he did his press conference, and uh, this is the same year that uh, uh, Obama came in, and Obama had a poster like this that said Obama, and it had all these colors in it. So I just thought I'd do um, Brian Burke. Actually, I think Brian Burke got one of these shirts himself. Probably. Um, yeah. The, the big words of the day were belligerence, truculence, testosterone. Pugnacity. <laughs> and you know what? He had all the right intentions. He brought in Kessel and stuff. And, you know, I just, I just knew that that kind of game wasn't going to work. I couldn't slow him down. So on the right, you have... Uh, obviously, a few years ago, the world's most popular or the more, world's most interesting man with uh, DeSockles. He always say, stay thirsty, stay yeah. thirsty. Mm -hmm. I thought it was Joe Thornton. That's why I had, yeah, well, you know what? The, the way I, I draw right now, it could be transitional. It could be me in, in 30 years. So, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. A lot of people don't notice that I slipped in the Stanley Cup. You see where I slipped it in? I do not. Hold on now. It's in the smoke. Ah, oh, so it is. Wow. So, um, and I also slipped in the stubby because that was the last time yeah. I was one. And I had to put the cigar in because uh, the Sockles guy did that. And also, uh, I know Ricky Vive thinks that's him. Oh, <laughs> so what's up with the 45? Me too, uh, 45 on the sleeve. Years? That time, man, 45 years since they did 45 it. 45 years. It wasn't burning. I, I changed that. And when we did the uh, another round of T-shirts, I put sixty-seven because okay. anyway, I would never have to change it again, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And hopefully, I I don't have to release this again. I hope no. I hope you never sell another one of those shirts after this there year. There you go. Hey, you have all, to make them all fence, but hey, double zero is the new number that will go on that one. So this painting on the left is painted on leaves again. And uh, that was a fundraiser that we did in 2006 for Team Canada. And uh, yeah, so that's Super cool. pretty much it. Uh, that was the cover for the Toronto Sun. The Toronto Sun used to, uh, that was the thing about the Toronto Sun is that once I got in, remember I said I was working 125 a week, then they started bringing me in for the big jobs doing, uh, things like this so that they would literally, you know how um, um, the newspaper is folds like a book form. 
Well, the, around the, the whole newspaper, they used to do these wraparounds. So I would do these full, full paintings. And um, the, the fans would go nuts and they say, we want prints. So I remember I made a lot of money off of uh, doing these campaigns because the marketing department was taking all the orders from people and I was making a piece of the action. So it was great. I was mm, I'll do. I wound up doing one. I think there's one up there in the corner. I don't know if I can move my thing for you guys. Yeah, I was looking at some of your baseball. Uh, I was a yeah, huge Bo Jackson. If I, move my, uh, if I move this thing up, I don't know if you can see that, but you can see the Batman. But the one on the inside there, there's a picture of the Leafs. That was one of the cover wraparounds. And that one was the biggest seller because that cool. was the year that um, the Leafs made it so far, you know, they got, they got beat out by Gretzky's. Uh, yeah, 93. Plastic. Yeah, it was 93. But you know what? I what, what happened this year with that referee in hockey? Uh, Tim Peel, yeah. You know what? It, it made me think right back to 1993 when Wayne Gretzky clipped uh, Gilmore. It was blatant. He, he clipped him and he didn't even get, he, he didn't get anything. Nothing. Nope. And I said, that told me that the league was rigged. I just said, nah, you know what? You cannot change my mind. You guys. Yep. I'm a, yeah. should have got to the finals. They would have beaten the Habs too, I think. I anyway, talk about that. Yeah, too. so this is another, uh, th actually, this wasn't a wraparound. So this was a sports, cut, like the cover of our sports department. So this would have been, um, I got really busy because the Jays were really doing well, right? And so... Every, everything to do with the Jays, I was doing it in Toronto. And uh, so this was the, uh, the lineups from the Chicago White Sox against uh, the just guys that I thought were the game breakers. For the, the big season. hurt. Yeah. Yeah. The big hurt, Frank Thomas. I was a big fan of him too. Yeah, I, I, like, I like Thomas. And then Paul Molitor. And I forgot the guy in the top. He's a, he's a first baseman. I can't remember. Johnny Olerud. Olerud. Road and then the, the pitcher was like MacArthur or something or Mick. Uh, That's the guy I didn't. I can't remember. Yeah, I don't know that one either. I can't remember either. Johnny Olaru batted what four hundred that year in the season. I was, I was actually uh on the first uh baseball photo you you piled up and had uh, a couple of the Atlanta Braves. I've been watching a lot of the old Atlanta Braves pitching videos of Greg Maddox. Like yeah, I can't Maddox. get enough of that. I can't get enough of it. I just watch like fifteen yeah, minute videos. Yeah. Yeah. So mm. these were uh, all these things what you would have found in um, in the hockey news publications. Uh, I, I used to have an actual page in uh, in the Inside Hockey magazine called uh, Face Offs. So you see Face Off in the corner. So that uh, caricature of Joe Sackick. Mm. That was a fun painting because I'd never used it <coughs> before. So that was uh, my first attempt at doing an oil painting but it, yeah. obviously it is caricature driven uh obviously the uh eric lindros was not that was actually done for a charity uh fundraising thing uh the one the wayne gretzky one on the far left i can't remember what, what happened with that i know it was in some magazine now rob you told me you went to new york one time to get to uh, get something signed by lindros and yeah, you lindros, got your son into the into yeah. the locker room so what happened was, uh, it was uh, just four months after 9-11, uh, and uh, I did a painting of uh, Eric Lindros because he was on Team Canada, the upcoming, uh, I think the tournament was in, uh, they won the tournament, Lake, not Lake Placid, down in uh, Utah or something, I can't remember. Salt Lake. Salt Lake, that's right, Salt Lake. So yeah. um, Consummate Dinner had, um, secured Eric Lindros so that uh, I could do the painting to do the fundraising for the consummate dinner. And that wasn't the painting that you're looking at here. wasn't the one I did. I did him in the Team Canada uniform. And I had to get a special permission from Team Canada to actually use that uniform. But uh, this required me to have to fly down to New York City to get uh, Eric to sign it. And I thought it was a great opportunity to take a 12 year old, my son, down with me because I wanted him, basically, I wanted to go to ground zero where the two buildings went down. And 
I just thought it was important and it was a good age for him to take it in and see what the reality of it was. And um, so my son came along, but obviously we had, we had some funny experiences because um, they made um, Lindros a healthy scratch because he had something going on with his thigh and they were trying to save him for the, uh, the Olympics. So he was a healthy scratch that game. So my son and I wound up going into the um, Ranger dressing room and it was just me, uh, Eric. Eric was riding the, uh, whatever that exercise bike is, working on his leg. But we're watching the hockey game in the dressing room and we've got the prints on the floor and every couple of minutes, Eric gets off the bike, gets down and rates a few and then he gets back. I mean, wants to watch the hockey game. So we're watching uh, the Rangers against the Islanders and the game's just going nuts. And Theron Fleury picked a fight with a big, big guy. And uh, remember McCarthy? McCarthy was a big, tough kid. He was yeah. also a ranger. So um, a big, huge fight was going on the ice and we could hear all the rumblings because we're, we're in, we're in the gardens, right? We, we hear it all. It's all above you. Yeah. We're, we're watching the game or we're watching the fight. So when you see the referee dancing uh, through and flurry to the, the door to enter the dressing room, it's, it was kind of comical because we're watching it on screen and all of a sudden, uh, you see him go down the thing and all of a sudden the door goes up and he goes, holy fuck, did you see that? <laughs> and then he looks over at my kid and he says, who the fuck are you? <laughs> it's just, he didn't know what to say. And then, and then in comes McCarthy and McCarthy was just as F-bombs this and that. Those that and mother you know, I was just, it was uh, pretty comical, but uh, my son and then the whole team comes in because the end of this first period so we're sitting we're, we're in the middle of the dressing room and the dressing room's full of guys right surprisingly how many guys smoke cig cigarettes during in between <laughs> yeah was that, that was interesting but but the next day um uh, we were staying at the edison hotel which is the cheapest hotel in new york and we wound up going to uh see uh, where the world trade center was and it was still oozing smoke and there were still oh, yeah. bodies coming out with flags on and i forgot they had some symbol that they knew that a body was coming like it was a si signal to everybody in the area to remove your hats because some somebody was found there bringing them up and but it, the thing was like it was it looked like a big cauldron and all this smoke was still oozing and i remember we went to a uh, Greek restaurant, you know, the pick up, pick up, cheeseburger, cheeseburger, one of those mm -hmm. kind of places. And they've got those uh, little bar stools and you sit at the thing. And, you know, Dylan, my son being 12, he like, he was doing the spins on the seats and rolling around. And even though he is 12, he's acting like an eight year old. But what he noticed underneath the, uh, underneath the, the counter, were all these plates and all the names of everybody that came to that restaurant that were killed at uh, um, World Trade Center was oh, yes, yeah. and the seats that we're sitting on, th those were covered, and uh, that really, boy, both of us, both of us just went, whoa, the the reality that we're actually eating in a restaurant that thousands of people perished, and yeah. You know, and this was one of their favorite places. So it was almost like entering a shrine of some sort. And, uh, but it was business as usual that day, even though it wasn't usual. Yeah. It's heavy. So that's uh, Johnny and I in his mom's kitchen. Uh, Johnny pretending to be taller than me. And, <laughs> uh, that's the original painting that's in a bar. I got a, a bar that I, uh, I'm, I, I frequent when it was uh, open, um, but they're Sri Lankan run guys. And, you know, the only sports they know is chasing donkeys, right? So I didn't know what, you know, <laughs> I always give them the gears on that. So you guys and your donkeys, but uh, <laughs> their walls, like they're called a sports bar. They're called a sports kitchen, but they, they had um, pictures of Hawaii and uh, Paris and everything on the walls. And I had to tell them, I said, that's not going to cut her. I said, you got to get rid of that stuff. And 
I, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, I'll hang my stuff here. And that's what yeah. I, well, I want to pay my stuff here. Then I started selling my paintings up the wall. So there, no way. there you have it. Yeah. It's, I love that Tim Horton. Drinking them Tim yeah, Hortons. Double double love Tim. that one. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I did that for uh, Chet Couture, who is uh, Logan's dad. So I guess Logan turned 31 a couple, three weeks ago. And his dad always uh, wanted to give him something that he thought was unique. So I, once again, I laid down the leaves, as you can see, and then did the, the, the logo on top. And I went downstairs and framed it up, as you see. So you can you can really jazz up a, an image. Yeah, no doubt. And so uh, the one on the right, that was Taylor Hall. That's when he was in his last year of... Uh, um, Windsor, I guess. Is it? Windsor, yeah, and um, he out, he actually helped me paint that leaf, and this was auctioned off for cancer. Uh, he had just lost somebody in his family to cancer, so there was a perfect synergy between me doing what I was doing with my turning that hockey player. So that hockey player, you remember that's uh, that was inspired by uh, Paul Henderson scoring that goal. So I, if you look closely, there's skates and there's gloves and stick. All I have to do is just place a, a leaf in the middle and it becomes a person, right? Okay, yeah. That's how it works. And uh, I've sold a lot of those over the years. But yeah, so that, I met, that was before he got drafted. And, and uh, they've got film on, on my interview because I had to sit with him. And I told him he would be the number one pick because he knows how to win because he's uh, – he was on two um, uh, sort of Memorial Cup teams. Uh, mm -hmm. All through his uh, minor hockey, he was always on winning teams. And yeah. I have play. Uh, I've coached a lot of hockey and a lot of lacrosse. And a win is a contagious thing. And you yeah. can learn. You can learn to win. You know. And uh, that's something that I think that the Leafs are going to have to get through this year. And I think they will because they got – the right guys they've got that's right components like i didn't think uh i didn't think boston would do well with uh taylor hall but i didn't either i'm wrong again right so mm. but there's a theme there's guys. a theme here yeah so i think but he is a winner uh and uh i think uh boston saw that and you know what good for them he's a he's a yes. really good guy a good kid yeah yeah, once again, you get your, and this is, uh, I turned our first, uh, our first prime minister into one of my kiss characters for celebrating That's awesome. his 50th birthday. And those leaves that are on his head are real leaves. So awesome. that was a t-shirt that I sold here and we sold a ton of those. And uh, I can see why. You know, it was, it was fun to do. Uh, one woman actually uh, tried to slap me in a bar think, thinking that I put the queen. She thought it was the queen. <laughs> How dare I do that? To the <laughs> and then I told her, I said, the problem with you ladies is that you all start to look the same at that age. You know? Whoa. <laughs> well, you got to give them the gears. They're, they're giving you the gears, you know. I'll tell you. That's right. Remember that, uh, I was telling you that's, you know, uh, um, when John Cherry got fired, the following yeah. morning was uh, like when he got fired. No, no. The day that he got fired, it was the Monday morning. And I went to that bar and I bought all the, all the poppies out of the, the box. And my buddy and I went to the cenotaph for the service. And what we did was um, anybody who didn't have a poppy, we gave them a poppy. Just not to be an asshole, just to give them a poppy, right? So um, I even gave one of these guys, you know, those uh, ATF guys, those uh, security guys, that the police use with those big guns. I gave him yep. one. He, he says, "Give it back." He said he, he told me, "Do not approach him because he's on he's on duty." Which was, I respected that, right? So then we went up to um, my buddy's father's grave, who was a war hero, and we left the poppy there. On the way down, my buddy needed to drive back to work, but we wanted to duck in and have a beer at a bar. So we went to this place called Gator Gator something in Burlington and. Uh, we walk into the bar and my buddy's got a boot cast on because he had had surgery on his ankle. So 
he wasn't too functional. But we get to the bar and we're sitting there on the corner and we're waiting to get served. And um, we're just talking a bit. And they've got this bar that's got a crew of guys. It's kind of like Cheers. They're all in one corner and they make fun of everybody. And uh, me and uh, my buddy were strangers. So they were kind of giving us the gears a bit. And we didn't do nothing because we're in our 60s. What are we going to do? Punch out every fucker around? Who knows, right? So I, uh, we're sitting there, and all of a sudden, my phone goes off, and my wife, Sandy, sent me a text saying, Don Cherry got fired. And I immediately looked and went, holy shit, Don Cherry got fired, just like that. And all of a sudden, these guys in the corner all fucking started cheering, going, yeah, get rid of that fucking asshole. I'm going, wow. Oh. And I'm looking at Jeff, and I'm, we're just kind of like, quiet and then all of a sudden i just got this idea i noticed that nobody at that bar was sitting there with a poppy not one of them had a poppy so i got up and walked around and i handed a poppy to the guy beside me poppy poppy pop I, I put about nine poppies around the bar and then there's two side tables and i put poppies there and then i sat down and i just looked at them and they just looked at me and none of them nobody would touch them and then i just said you know, when Don talked about you people, he was talking about you fucking people, right? <laughs> yeah. We nearly, we nearly got in it, and my buddy's sitting there in a walking cast, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, we, didn't even, we didn't even pay for our drinks. We just left them and walked out of the bar. And he, he hobbled right behind me. But yeah, we, we had a little run in there. So what oh, you just said, right? this is uh, Andrew Colligliano, and uh, I got commissioned to do the painting of his thousandth game but he um started out with edmonton and then um went to anaheim and then he's currently with uh dallas now he finally got his thousandth game man but they they had to really tape that guy together to get him to the thousandth game because i know he was a hurting dude oh it had to be oh uh, yeah so yeah that was uh that was fun that's uh and, and this is one of those uh, face-off pages again. Basically, yeah. I had carte blanche. I could do caricature. I could do realism, whatever I wanted. Or I, I could just try uh, try an experiment. Whatever you want. And this one here was an experiment because I actually used real gold paint. So all oh, that okay. is real gold paint. So, yeah, that was fun. I remember, uh, I think, uh, Medano. Yeah, Medano contacted me about it, but I think it was already, it was already sold. Nice. incredible so yeah i'm a big big fan of terry fox and uh i started this uh, tradition way back in the 90s johnny Tavares was uh at uh at terry's grave but i brought my initial team to his grave and it was a fluke how it happened because uh we had a day off in lacrosse and it happened to be a holiday that day and i was in one of those white spot restaurants and i overheard a guy uh saying that it was uh, uh terry fox's birthday in two or three days i think it was july 5th or something and, and immediately i went wow where is terry right so i literally went back to where we were staying we were staying at the uh, uh simon fraser U university and they had a library there and i found out the exact location where uh, terry was buried and I loaded up our team bus and I took my team to the graveyard and we all stood around the grave. And it was an interesting experience because uh, just the way kids think at that age, like, who is this dude? You know, and then other guys will say, that's the guy that tried to run a cash Canada and stuff. But the one guy said, why is there change all over the, uh, like, like, why are there coins and change all over that? And I said, well, I said, people, or leaving donations. That's how they leave donations. So as soon as I said that, one of my players, Johnny Black, I don't know where he got all the coins, but he emptied like $15 worth of change out of his pocket, which caused everybody there to uh, un unleash their dough, right? But an oh, interesting cool. thing happened on our way in as we were driving. So we, we had all these big vans, right? And so we... Um, Ed Follett was driving the one behind and we were in the lead van. And all of a sudden, when we were pulling into the graveyard, this three-legged three -legged dog ran across in front of us. 
And uh, I just looked over at my assistant coach and I said, this is kind of odd because we're going to go see a one-legged runner. We just saw a three-legged dog. Yeah. So we get to the grave and Ed Fowler comes up to me. He says, did you see that three-legged frog or that <laughs> fox? And I went, no way. He says, yeah, that was a fox. And I said, no three-legged. Yeah, that, that really happened. So if you ever talk to Justin, Justin Fowler, he'll tell you about that. Story. I'm going to ask him about it. Sure. How fluky would that be? That's wild. Yeah. Yeah, so um, this is at this very same time I was doing uh, the John Tavares print, and I'd have to go to uh, Brian Aaronworth's place at uh, Brainworth. And uh, I thought Eddie Shack lived there, because every time I went there, Eddie Shack was there, right? And um, But uh, Eddie Shack was coming out with this particular book, and uh, Brian Aaronworth was running the pro program and I was just, I was just stopping by. We we're going over a few things and then in comes uh, Shaq and he is just like full of like, it's like a bull in a china shop when he walks in. Yeah. But he let me wear the ring, but I was yes. surprised at how small his fingers were like, look at like, uh, I couldn't get my, uh, the ring over my knuckle. If you look at oh, yeah. But he's a good guy. He, he, he's a real character. That, that guy yeah it's always you, been known you ever know that story that uh, he, he, he really didn't know how to read right like so uh, the night that we went to his uh his book book opening uh he was sitting up at the table but he had a woman sitting beside him and then people would come by and say what's your name oh my name's ted to my buddy ted it was written by the girl and then Shaq would sign it oh wow so, but uh do you guys know that story that when uh he was uh with the leafs and uh guy's name Billy Ray was the coach of the Chicago Blackhawks and he was kind of making fun with the fact that uh, um, um, Eddie Shaq couldn't even write his name if he could you know because uh -huh. it, it, he didn't have the skills well that night in Chicago um, uh, Shaq went in on the play scored the goal and came by came by the bench and yelled hey you motherfucker G-A-O-A-L <laughs> <laughs> you guys you ever heard that story yeah, yeah that's the first time i've heard that that's the first one yeah <laughs> he's, like... a, he's a character there's a um the, the game they were down like five to two and they're like they're no they're down five to three with two minutes left and shacky was had been sitting on the bench for two periods and all of a sudden the inlock says shacky Get on the ice, get on the ice. So Shaggy jumps on the ice and turns around. Hey, coach, do you want me to tie the game or win it? Right? <laughs> you guys understand it? You know, because they were down by two goals and he's just throwing them out there for now. Yeah. <laughs> so this thing here, this uh they inducted me into the uh my town is Oakville. And there's Ed Follett in the purple shirt, by the way. Mm. Um and these guys were all people in my life and they brought jerseys from teams that they had played for on me. So I thought it was pretty cool. And I got a silver plate that you can put your uh, roast beef on if you, you know, <laughs> carve it up. It was a good, good thing. Good night. Excellent. That's the end so of it there. there. Yeah. Thanks for uh, doing that for me guys. So, oh, that was amazing. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, that's the best way to do it. Well, I'm not going to keep you any longer because we are in. I'm. I'm actually going to have to trim some of this down. <laughs> it's like, yeah, we're, do you think? We're uh, we're past full full length feature movie time here. So, yeah. no. Uh, we really want to thank Better. you Rob, for for taking the time, man. Uh, like I said, when your name was passed my way, I was like, really seriously, because I would, I didn't even really know how to get in touch with you at the beginning. But anyway, I was familiar with your art, but I was like, okay. So, cool. taking the time to talk to a couple of newfie boys late in the night, uh, yes. stories uh we really appreciate it i'm not gonna forget this right. one time, so. that was amazing oh, it's, there, right? yeah, it's late okay. 1 30. i got a message though from kylie our, yeah. our, our co-host and she sent me she said she says this is this is my sad face so yeah then, uh, she said to say so make sure to say hi to rob she says she's looking forward to meeting you at some point and uh hopefully we can get you back on so then we'll just maybe just talk hockey for an hour or so and talk about the leafs maybe in the playoffs even so well, thank you it was yeah. when I a real pleasure to be with you guys. I really like it. Oh, the pleasure's all ours. All right. <laughs> wow. Man, you know what? 
that was a lot of wild, wild stuff he said on there. <laughs> it's like, a marathon. I'm thinking to myself, this is way too long for a podcast, but how the hell do I trim any of it out? Because this is this is all golden stuff. Like, this is just... Juice. It's all kinds yeah. of juice in there, man. So it's going to be a challenge, but guys, when you watch this podcast, you're going to be watching the shortened version, because holy hell. Holy hell. I don't even know how yeah. Rob's got a voice left. He's He... Uh, he obviously thoroughly enjoyed and himself. It, and he and was he good to go. Him. Yeah. There's yeah. lots more. The guy is, I mean, he's just been bumping elbows with everybody forever. Forever. Almost 40 years. Yeah, absolutely. Across to hockey and everything in between and all the celebs along the way. <laughs> he's he's a fairly humble guy, too. I mean, like, he's not the kind who, you know, troubles people for autographs or, you know, it's kind of you know, on the phone all the time trying to, trying to get, dropping names and trying to get, you know, uh things his way uh people respect him for what he does and i think he he pays that in return and uh the fact like i said he took some time <coughs> excuse me some time to uh talk to us tonight i'm just i'm still blown away just that such is, good content his art and attention to detail like you got to appreciate those little details he works in everywhere that's uh but i think now that, what 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 stands out to me my, my 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 final thought i think from this podcast is that now that i've met the guy and re- got a what I consider to be a good feel for his personality, like his art oozes his personality. You know oh, what I mean? Big time. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm like, I, like it makes sense to me now. Like they, like not that it didn't before. I just it made sense to me before as amazing art. Now it's like, no, oh, that's that's McDougal to the to the yes. core. <laughs> so, yeah. no, if you enjoyed what you heard, uh, thanks for hanging in for the to, to the bitter end because it was a it was a long one, but a but a good one, our longest one yet. Um, if you're looking for any more content from us, you can check us out on uh, Facebook, www.facebook.com slash Deke Snipe Selly. Uh, catch yeah. us on Twitter, uh, at Selly Deke. Um, you can get us on uh, our own website, www.deeksnipeselly.ca. And, of course, our audio feeds, which is growing on the daily. Um, the only catch with this one, guys, when you're doing a podcast about an artist, there's a lot of visuals. So if you're listening to the audio and some of it doesn't exactly make sense, uh, jump over to the video podcast and uh, and give it a listen there as well. Yep. You'll see uh, we we went through a litany of Rob's art there at the end, and uh, that's where he was juicing us with stories. So, again, uh, available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher, uh, basically anywhere that you listen to your podcast. So, yes, indeed. Yeah, thanks so much for listening and uh, and watching. And like I said, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already on YouTube. So, I yep. guess that's it, Chad. Man, anything from you? No, man, it's all good. It's amazing. Peace out, guys. All right, cheers.